lojong uh, lojong practice so it is uh, translated as mind training in english uh, basically it is a practice of uh, bodhicitta so train our mind into bodhicitta so that is what it mean by uh, mind training so mind training uh, is actually not uh, difficult to understand it's a uh, is very easy to understand because uh, if we do totally if we do totally opposite to what we are doing now it is mind training so right now Uh, whatever we do whatever we think we think about only ourselves we do on only only about ourselves you know um benefit oneself anything we think anything what we say anything what we do uh, to benefit oneself to be a winner <laughs> and uh, and uh, um doesn't care if somebody eyes uh loose or somebody eyes uh fail to benefit uh, or somebody eyes uh affected so this is our normal way of uh getting our life or in another way spending our life so bodhi i mean mind training is something which is totally opposite to that and uh, of course the mind training there are so many variety of texts variety of teachings that one can study that one can practice so many of them but if you put all of them into one sentence then one great master have said that uh, the the core of meaning of mind training the core of essence of maintaining is in tibetan it is said kheda jeka shenate chonda buka rangi kur which means give benefit and to victory to others and chonda buka rangi kur means chong means lose losing loss basically loss and uh, um basically loss you take on yourself 
No. So that two sentence contain uh, combine all the practice of mind training. And if you further want to study and practice about mind training, then there are so many texts, so many teachings that one can study. There's so many details. For example, there's a text called Bodhisattva Kyara Charya Avatara, which is a thick, thick text that is composed by one of the Indian great master Shantideva and the whole text is about how to practice mind training and uh, of course there are so many other texts and some of the popular texts are their uh, seven point of mind training 37 practice of body Bodhisattva and uh, eight uh, steps of mind training or eight words of mind training. So in that way there are so many texts that you can study and learn. Um, so today I will talk about a few things. Uh, extract from you know uh, extract juice from this text uh, I don't know will it be in uh, uh, you know uh, orderly or not but uh, I will try and uh, the mind training, uh, let's explain and express in this way. Um, view, meditation, conduct, and the result. So, I'll try to explain in this four category about the mind training. So view of mind training is able to see able to see and perceive and conceive all the sentient beings as seen. You know, there is no dear and near one, and uh, there is no uh, this kind of discriminating. This my side, their side, you know, uh, friend, enemy, my race, their race. So there is no uh, any discrimination in this, that case. So able to see, able to perceive, uh, able to uh, believe that all sentient beings are actually not different. Not just human being, also, also all the six realm sentient beings. So that is the view of mind training. That is the view of bodhicitta practice. Of course, when I say uh, able to see everyone. Every sentient beings, every single sentient beings, same doesn't mean that everybody should 
look like Malaysian. <laughs> you know, doesn't mean that everyone should look like Asian. <laughs> you know, not like that. Or everyone should be look like man. It is okay, you know. Um, if, we, if somebody looks like Asian, somebody looks like Western, somebody looks black, somebody looks white, it's totally okay. And I don't mean, it doesn't mean by that. As when, when, uh, yeah, when, when you say same. So it means same in a sense that everyone feels the same. Everyone aspire the same wish. Everyone have a same wish. So on that level, there's no difference. You know, everyone is aspiring, wishing to gain happiness. Everyone is wishing and aspiring to eliminate the suffering. So in that level, we are all same. There's no different. Whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you are man, women, older, children, you know, Western, Asia, Dato, not Dato, <laughs> everyone is safe on that level. Animal, hell, God, demigod, human being, we all share that same aspiration, same wish. And that is not somebody. Uh, taught us that aspiration is not somebody input in our brain. No, it is natural. So by natural, but by naturally, we are all the same. No? So that is the view. That is the view of Bodhicitta practice. Now, meditation. So, how we can uh, arrive there? How we can uh, achieve that state? <laughs> that is quite challenging. No? So, generally, uh, view is something uh, that you look far from far. It is like uh, not necessarily that the meditation uh, can follow the step of view right away. <laughs> and it is not necessary also and not uh, possible also. For example, when we walk, we don't look at our feet. We look maybe a few meters away. That is like a view. But in order to reach there, we cannot just jump there. You, we have to go there step by step. You know? So after a few walk, after a few steps, then we will reach there where we are looking at. So driving also same. So meditation is like that. We you, you look far, that's the ultimate goal. But meditation, you have to go practically. You know? So that's the difference. So when it comes to meditation, you cannot 
right away uh, think, feel everyone as the same. For that reason, we need a training. You know, so meditation is the training that actually leads us there. So, um, so of course there are uh, many training, and uh, first effective, important uh, thing to do is this: this uh, uh, compassion this kind thought try to apply on someone who is close to you like a family member you know, someone you find easy to apply apply those for example like a patience forgiveness you know, so on and on. So all these generosity, all of this, you know, is uh, all these six parameters are the practice of bodhicitta. So these practice you try to at the beginning apply on your uh, to the people you know, which, who are close to you, like your family member, you know, like your good friend, you know, you, people you find more easy to apply. Then once your mind train and uh, become uh, uh, more trained, then you apply this practice to neutral people. People neither close to you nor far to you. That means people neither is your family or friend or nor your enemy or people you don't like it. So neutral. So people in between. So you try to apply to them, you know. And then third one, so after that, once your meditation, the mind training become more stronger, more mature, then you can gradually apply to the people who you don't like, whom you don't like, you know. People you consider uh, <coughs> enemy people you think is a most irritating <laughs> irritating person you know so in that way this kind of uh, step if we practice then it is possible <coughs> gradually it is possible that one can reach to that view you know so that is the uh, uh, meditation meditation and uh, a meditation is like uh, even you don't interact you can sit and visualize and do the meditation uh, you know you are uh, s sending your love sending your kindness sending your compassion sending your positive to the people whom you feel near and close and gradually to neutral and gradually to people you think who is your you know enemy so in that way without interacting interacting just in your mind you can do uh, the practice you can do visualization visualize like that for the meditation. Now come to conduct. Conduct then, so 
uh, slowly, not only that you practice this mind training when you were sitting in your meditation room, but uh, practicing that with the uh, people, you know, with the situation. Uh, first with the people you are close to you, then to the neutral, then to the people you find very difficult. So in that way, uh, you know, uh, your practice of mind training, uh, not just uh, um, establish, but uh, evolve uh, quickly, evolve very fast. And then through through the view, meditation, and the conduct, then you reach to the view that you have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, established. Then you reach there, and that is the result. So in that way, uh, meditation, uh, mind training meditation. Uh, uh, through through the view, through the meditation, through the conduct, and uh, through the result. So it is something like that. Uh, that's one thing. And then, uh, since uh, mind training itself is a uh, way of transforming our mind. There are other, you know, methods that also um, mentioned in uh, yeah, text. So that also I would like to share. So we call this Jumde Menga Du. Jumde means um, the instruction of uh, seven uh, cause and result or cause and effect. So that is called Jude Mengadu. So in that way also one can actually uh, train, train oneself, train our mind into the practice of Bodhicitta. So there are uh, these seven steps that one can practice and uh, practice through mind training. So the first one uh, in that uh, teaching, it is said uh, Marsheva. Marsheva means one should able to see uh, everyone all the sentient being as a, a mother, Marsheva. So the mother, because mother, uh, most of us, mother is the most uh, kind person, consider most kind person in our life. You know. So if you if some of you have uh, someone like, you know, your father who is similar kind and, um, you know, uh, caring and loving to you, you can also think of that also. So, not necessarily you have to think uh, only mother. So, the reason of mentioning mother is because mother is considered most kind and most loving person for someone's life. So whoever that is, you can think of that. So Marsheva means you you imagine uh, all session being kind as mother. Marsheva, you know. 
And then second one is Tin Sheba. Tin Sheba means then you remember the kind of that mother on the shoes of the um, kind, kind of mother. Remember the I get the swear very easily. Sorry. So there's a seven step. Um, first is consider all sentient beings as mother kind. And then second is Tinshaba. Tinshaba means kind. Think of their kindness. Whether it is your mother or your father or your uh, whoever take care and uh, give you uh, love and uh, kindness. So uh, remember the kindness. Remember the uh, yeah, remember the kindness of them. You know, so second is that. And then third one is uh, Tin Soa. Tin Soa means so uh, Thinking of paying back, thinking of paying back the, you know, thinking of paying back the kindness. Okay, it's okay. Maybe slowly. Little warm, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I get uh, sweat a little easily, so that's why. <laughs> Somehow. Mm, okay. Ah, oh, it's help a little bit. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so yeah, no, I think it's okay. means remembering the kindness. Um, this is a traditional way of saying that uh, uh, all the, and it is the fact also, that is, there is no anyone uh, who have not been our mothers in our past life, you know. So, uh, you know, every single sentient beings have been our mother in our past life, you know. And uh, during that time, they have given us all this love and this care same as love and care that these parents, this mother is giving to us. 
has given to us. Uh, so in that way, uh, you know, uh, all the sentient beings are same kind and same uh, loving as this, this life mother. For example, uh, there is uh, one story, right? Uh, uh, I think uh, the, you know, the Katayana, I think. So, the Katayana, the Buddha disciple, he went to beg for arm. He went for beg for arm. And uh, so, uh, and then uh, in the village, he saw one uh, uh, in the women who is uh, holding a uh, holding her baby, and uh, at the same time uh, eating meat and uh, as well as uh, 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 the bones also and uh, you know the the dog that comes near to her she she's kicking she's kicking to that dog chasing that dog away so baba katayana he have um, clear words right he have a clear voice and he actually see the past life of all this. Uh, uh, he see the past life of that woman, he see the past life of that uh, the meat, and he see the past life of that bones, he see the belong to, and he see the past life of that uh, the dog as well. So he said that uh, the samsara is funny, you know. The the fish, the meat that he is eating is his past life father. And then the meat, I mean the bones that he is licking is uh, her past life husband bone. And then the dog, which she kicking away, is her past life mother. And then one that she hold on her lap, the baby, small baby, is actually he, her past life enemy. <laughs> you know? So Katayana was laughing. So he laughed. He said that it is lovable. The samsara is lovable. You know. So somehow samsaric being, we see only narrow things. We don't see uh, far, far existing. Uh, uh, what do you call? Ne nature, you know, so uh, we only see uh, things uh, which is uh, limited, <laughs> you know, which is very narrow and which is uh, uh, very, which is only just one side of reality, you know. So we, uh, we have no capacity to see the bigger picture. We have no capacity to see the uh, uh, full reality. You know? So, so Katayana said that, you know, the samsara is laughable. So we all, for like us, we only think that uh, we only think that 
we think that uh, we don't see that how we are all uh, interrelated, interrelated, interconnected, and uh, that also how closely we are interrelated, interconnected, like as we do with our pres present parents, present family, you know. So we are not able to see that. So uh, if we see that, then naturally, uh, you know, uh, you will see the kindness. You know, you will see the uh, care, significant of their existence. In another way, uh, these are uh, what do you call? Uh, okay, I will talk that later. But anyway, I will not uh, distract from this uh, what I've been trying to say. So, uh, yeah, so the second one is Tin Temba. Tin Temba means remember, remembering the kindness. So, without remembering the kindness, without able to have a, a feeling of uh, compassion and uh, kindness, then uh, it's very difficult uh, for both spiritual path and our, uh, you know, uh, worldly life to uh, attain and accomplish anything. No. So, for for the spiritual practice also, in order to accomplish the spiritual practice, in order to attain the freedom, in order to attain the enlightenment or nirvana or whatever, uh, one must have a you know, kind. We must have a compassion. You know? So, without compassion, without uh, you know, kindness, there's uh, no way that one can able to achieve the uh, enlightenment. It is like uh, enlightenment to attain the enlightenment. Wisdom and compassion are like uh, two wings of birds. So, in order to birds to fly, you know they need two wings. The same way, without wisdom and compassion, both there is no way that one can attain the enlightenment. So, in spiritual path, it is also also like that. And in uh, our worldly life also, without compassion, without kind, I think uh, we won't be that successful. You know, when it comes to uh, work, when it comes to business, when it comes to any other thing, you know, without kind, caring and compassion. I think for a short while maybe you will be successful. But in longer run, I don't think you will be you will be successful. You know? So more you care, more compassion you are, more successful you will be also. In worldly life also. So in that way uh, whether it is spiritual path or worldly, compassion is key thing. So ten jampa means you must remember the the kindness. Okay, with this I want to also share one story also. So this is story of uh, Asanga. Asanga is one 
Indian great master. And then he's, he have a great faith to Maitreya. He have a very great faith to the Maitreya. So he want to uh, see the Maitreya in his vision. So that was his goal. And he meditated, meditated, meditated. He went to cave and meditated for three years. And after three years, no success. He didn't see the Maitreya. So he gave up. He came out from his cave. Then right on his uh, cave door, I, 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 how to say, the gate. You know, the, the cave uh, next, I mean, the, the door. So he saw one bird, you know, flying every day, flying out, searching for food, and then come back in the evening. So he see that bird every day. So where the bird, he the flip her, you know, wings to the rock. That rock actually worn out. So Asanga say to himself that, oh, my effort is nothing. You know. This bird just flapping, you know, wings to the rock can uh, worn out rock like that. Uh, you know, compared with that, my effort is nothing. You know, I didn't, I didn't do enough practice. So he went back, and then he did another three years. He meditated. He meditated, meditated three years. No, no success again. He didn't see the Maitreya. Then he came out and then he went out and he saw the, you know, the water drop in the cave. Small, tiny water drop. And the way the water fall, the again, you know, the, the, the rock uh, got hole there. Then he tell himself, now this small drop can make this big hole and compared to that my effort is nothing you know so he went back again he did another three three years meditation again he failed he didn't see the maitreya and then he came out he went to the village and then he saw one old man his uh, He's uh, rubbing, uh, you know, this big metal, rubbing with a small, you know, smooth cloth, rubbing that, that big metal. Then he asked that old man, what you are doing? Then the old man say, I am making a needle. So he say, Asanga say, how it is possible, you know, you are, you are rubbing that big metal with that smooth cloth, how it can make the needle? And the old man said, you don't believe me? He show, he opened his box and there's hundred of them already made. <laughs> needle he already made. And then he went back, oh, we, this guy, you know, who just rubbed the small, smooth cloth on this thick needle, I mean thick metal and making the needle and he made hundred of them already compared to that my effort is nothing you know. So he went back, he went back, back in the cave and then he meditated again. So total he meditated 12 years to see the Maitreya. Uh, he, he didn't succeed. So finally he gave up you know. So he thought that now it's not going to happen. So he gave up and then he came out from the cave and went to the village. And then in the village he saw one 
poor dog, you know, who is uh, having wound here, wound, uh, wounded, and uh, inside womb, womb, warm, 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 warms, yeah, warms, maggots, yeah, maggots. So fill with the maggots. And then he was, uh, the Asanga was thinking, how I should help this, you know. He felt so compassionate. So if I didn't take this worm out, worm out, then the dog suffering, dog will suffer and eventually die. And if I take out this, you know, then in uh, another way, then this worm will also die. So what I can do? So he finally decided to cut his flesh from his leg. Cut his flesh and then it, he tried to take the worm out by his tongue. So he felt so compassion seeing this uh, suffering dog and the womb as well. Then he closed his eyes and, uh, and just lick, lick the wound and uh, then there's no more dog. And what he sees is Maitreya. You know, so this is the power of uh, compassion. So because of compassion, he meditated 12 years, but not able to purify his karma. <laughs> but one single genuine compassion purify all his karma, all his impure perception. And then he see the Maitreya. Now after seeing Maitreya, he start complaining. <laughs> like, I think seeing Buddhas and Bodhisattva is like seeing your friends, family, you can complain right away. <laughs> so Maitreya, Asanga start complaining right away. I meditated you know, this many years, 12 years, and you didn't show up, you know. How can you, you know, torture me like that? <laughs> how, can, how can you show me like that, that long? And Medriya said, no, that's not true. I was always there. I was always with you. But it is that you didn't see me. You know. So if you don't believe me, then you take me and show to the people on your shoulder and show to the people and you will know. So, you know, he, Asanga took Maitreya on his shoulder and then walked around the town. And then he was asking, you know, interacting with all the people, asking people, do you see anything on my shoulder? <laughs> so everyone answer is, no, nothing. Are you crazy? <laughs> Nothing is there. Nobody see the Maitreya. And there is one old woman. She is a little bit, I think, fortunate uh, old lady. And she see, you know, one dead dog <laughs> carrying by Asanga. Not Maitreya, but just a dead dog there. So uh, this is uh, how the compassion uh, is how powerful it is. And then Asanga uh, went with the uh, Maitreya and took him to Tushita and then he composed uh, with the help of Maitreya the five testes of Maitreya, the teaching of Maitreya, this five, I mean in our tradition, these five texts is considered very important text. So Asanga composed that, and uh, you know, it's available for us to study <laughs> the present moment. So this is how uh, compassion, you know, also 
in the spiritual path, how effectively purifies our, you know, uh, impure karma, our defilements. Now, ten temper. Now, ten soa. Ten soa means now how to pay back the kindness. So you have to, uh, uh, you you have to generate that. You will generate that thought. Once you know how kind they are, then you will think of paying the kind. Paying kind back doesn't mean buying rotichana. <laughs> huh? Or tosi. <laughs> Tetare. Not that. That is also okay, small part. But here, paying back kindness means spiritually. You know, spiritually practice, spiritually transform, you know, spiritually um, free oneself to ultimately help these sentient beings. That is the way of being true way of paying kindness back. Okay. So paying back. And then third one is paying back. Then fourth one is chamba. Chamba is a kindness. Kindness means uh, kindness is a little bit different from compassion. Kindness is thought of thinking that may all sentient beings, other sentient beings, you know, uh, achieve the happiness. That is the kindness. So first you feel kindness to them. May they achieve the happiness. You know, May they achieve the freedom, fearlessness. And then compassion. Compassion is may they be free from suffering. That is the compassion. Then after that, then laksam. Laksam is uh, kind of like a I don't know how to say. Uh, what is samba? Genuine, genuine thought. You know. So you are not simply uh, feeling kind, feeling compassion, but uh, acting. You, know, you are acting, uh, you know, on that. You are acting to eliminate the suffering. You are acting to provide the happiness. Your body, speech, mind, engage, acting or engaging in not simply wishing happiness, not simply wishing kindness, but your body, speech, and mind engaging in delivering the happiness, engaging in removing the obstacles. That is uh, what you call uh, what I just used uh, pure thought. Yeah, genuine thought. Genuine. Genuine thought, you know. So it is not just okay up to feel kind and feel compassion, you know. Oh, you know, uh, we used to uh, sometimes stuck just to kind and compassion. Yeah. We say, oh, uh, you know, 
this this uh, boy, this guy, pity like that. But when it comes to health, <laughs> you're restrained. So that is a lack of genuine thought. The sixth one. So genuine thought is engaging, not just wishing, but engaging through your action, through your uh, voice, through your thought. And then, so these six is considered as a six um, cause. And with this six cause, practicing this six cause, uh, completing this six cause, the result what we get, result what we one will, one will get is the true bodhicitta, true enlightenment. You know. So, so in that way, these uh, seven way of uh, cause and result. Jundi Mema, the sacred instructions of uh, cause and result. How to practice, how to develop, how to generate uh, the bodhicitta or ultimate mind training in our mind. Yeah, so this way, <laughs> then uh, gradually uh, we can study and we can train and we can ac accomplish. And uh, uh, the more the what we what what I mean what result the mind training will bring or what is the purpose or what is the benefit of mind training of course there are so many so much you know it is like a it is like a gem you know it will, it will give you friend it will give you love it will give you faith in the, in the worldly point of view and spiritual point of view it will lead you to enlightenment it will lead you to nirvana you know so in that way it is a gem it is the real gem you know and not only that it gives you a physical health, health benefit also <laughs> positive more positive you are, more compassion you are, more kind you are, you know, more happy you will be, more stressless you will be, and more stressless you are, more healthy you will be as well. In another way, if you are uh, less compassion, you know, and uh, doubtful, suspicious, selfish, you know, then very stressful it will be your mind state and that will affect gradually your body as well. And this is very, very uh, how to say, clear. <laughs> so there's so many, so much, so many benefits, you know, and above all, the person become not just uh, happy for him or herself, but person will uh, make other people happy, peaceful, Even single breath that person breathe, 
that too will be beneficial for the sentient beings. And the person will be very satisfied, very happy. So real mind training, uh, uh, you know, a practitioner will be someone like that. Even one step he made, that too will be benefit of sentient beings. What he eat will be also for the benefit of sentient beings. Eyes he blink will be benefit of sentient beings. There's no single instant that is not for the benefit of sentient beings. So you become Maintaining, mind become you, maintaining become you, no separate. So that kind of level, um, we all have potential to become. You know, we all have that potential. Now I will give you one example. There's a one great practitioner, you know, maintaining practitioner. So when he was about to die. He said that he told to his uh, friend that now I'm I'm going to die. So you guys read some sentence of mind training practice. And then in casual chatting, he said that you know my, you know what is my wish. I, my wish is to, after I die, to born into the hell realm. To help, to help the hell realm sentient beings. But he was sad. He said that now it doesn't look like I'm going to hell realm. Because I'm seeing all this pure perception. Buddhas and Bodhisattvas around me pure land around me. So it doesn't look like I'm going to born into hell realm. Looks like that is not going to happen. So in fact he was sad. He was sad that he's certain suddenly he will born into the you know pure land. That was not his wish. So now this story will just click to first word that I said. Main practice of the mind training is, as I said, giving benefit and victory to others, taking loss to on oneself. Well, you might think, oh, this is, they are different, you know, they are, you know, uh, different beings highly realized being, they can do that, not me. <laughs> it's not like that. Everybody can do that. Everyone has same potential. So this is one example. The, but uh, mind training is not only about taking other people, suffering, giving other people, not only that also. For example, there is one master. He said that when I see two people, no reason, he always, you know, think, you always wish that this stranger, these two people, you know, may be, you know, wish that these two people are very close to each other friendly to each other, no issue between them, simply wish, simply arise that kind of bodhicitta thought. When some stranger, two stranger working there, just naturally think, oh maybe they two are best friend, no issue between them. For us, we see two people, we think, what is problem in between them? <laughs> we like to 
listen the gossip. Yeah, we like to see the issue, problem between peoples. So as simple as that, like that, the mind training. Another example, there is one great master. He, I mean, he supposed to go to see one great master, again mind training master. And then he heard that that master died. Then he sent one of his students, go to that monastery and see what is the situation now. Now their master died and the, the master is great master. But now how the disciples are doing? You just spy on them and just come back. Then the student went there. Then he, he come back. And he said that, okay, the master have three main disciples and they are quarreling between themselves. They are, they are having disagreement between themselves. And then the, the master say, oh, then there is no point going there. Because if they quarrel and disagreement, then that means there is no more mind training there. <laughs> you know. Then... Then the messenger say, no, 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 N not disagreement uh, and quarreling not mean that way. They are having disagreement because nobody want to sit higher. One say, you sit, you take the in charge. Another say, you take in charge. You know? So this is how you know, the mind training practice should be like. And now, <laughs> this world, you know, there's so much problem. I want to become <laughs> in charge. I want to become in charge. And then there's, did that lead a lot of problem? So not like that. You are better, you sit. I'm nothing. So they are having these three, having this agreement on that. <laughs> no other reason. And then he was very happy. Oh, that means they are still, still carrying that practice. Okay. So maintaining is in nutshell, it's something uh, like that, the example, and uh, transforming one's mind and uh, becoming a utmost understanding and a compassionate being that is the meaning of mindful training okay so with this i will stop my talk today yeah can we take about a few questions okay sure uh you talk a bit on uh, kindness and compassion mm. but if you were being cheated or scared of all your savings how can you continue to feel compassion and kindness towards that person i find it very difficult to overcome this, this barrier can you maybe teach us mm. <laughs> Only successful people get scanned. <laughs> I don't think a homeless person will get scanned. Yeah, but it's true. But the thing is, once you're scared, you are uh, what you call you lost everything. So it's back to square one. Yeah. But you don't lose one thing. You don't lose the compassion. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's why uh, when it comes to practice, it takes, takes, uh, takes practice, you know. So, real practice of compassion, bodhicitta, these, uh, I mean, uh, scam or obstacles or difficulties, 
they are actually support of your practice. They are like a fuel for the fire. <laughs> yeah, it is true. And uh, in 37 practice of Bodhicitta, it is mentioned that uh, accusation, uh, bully, they are all your real teacher. Uh, if that's the case, can I take it as like the other person has come back to, or rather I have to pay back the karma, or if the person has come back to reclaim whatever that is done in the past life, can I interpret the way? That is also one way that you can think, or you are purifying your karma, you know. You are, okay, maybe I have debt, debt to him, or him in my past life, so I'm paying back, now it has been paid, so that way, if we able to think that way, then uh, karma purify even more faster, you know. Uh, one example I want to give you is, uh, um, there's one great master, you know, so he was, when he was very young, he was naturally born with that quality, compassion quality. So he said that when I was young, 8, 9, 10, 12 years old, that time itself, you know, they go, they go with their age, uh, you know, same age children, they go out in Tibet to collect the firewood. So they collect the firewood and come back. If he get better firewood and bigger firewood, he feel very sad. He don't feel happy. When somebody, his friend get you know, less firewood and worse firewood, then he's, he suffer. And he give his own firewood to them as a young age. So this is uh, one example. And another example, um, you know, Atisha, you know Atisha? Atisha went to Tibet and he bring his attendant who is very short-tempered. <laughs> Get angry right away. So Tibetan people told Atisha, you are such a great master, well-known world master in India. How come you have uh, only this person to bring with you, you know, as an attendant? You don't have, you don't find any other better, con better attendant to bring? Why you have to bring him? You know, who gets angry right away? You know, for s small reason, he gets angry. How can you bring like that with you? And Atisha said, it is because of him who I, who am I now? Because of him, I will, I was able to, you know, practice my patience. So this is how, as a mind training practitioner, you take obstacles at an advantage, opportunity, and you grow. Okay. I have one more question. Uh, can you develop the power of clairvoyance through meditation? Develop the clairvoyance. Sorry? Clairvoyance? Yes. Through what? Through meditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Okay. But you have to meditate. Okay. <laughs> but that is not the ultimate yeah. goal. It's just a, you know, what I call bonus kind of stuff. <laughs> we call it uh, eight, eight uh, common city, we call it. So one of them is clear wines one can achieve through the meditation. Uh, 
teaching that you don't give outside of three years retreat. You get uh, those teaching in three years retreat and uh, also get chance to practice those sacred teaching uh, which in Tibetan tradition they don't give outside of three years retreat and at least in you know at least in Kaju tradition. So, like six yoga of Naropa and uh, some important deities practice, some important Mahamudra practice. So, these are all you can learn and uh, receive a transmission, uh, explanation, and also get a chance and time to practice those in three years. Retail. That is, I think. Uh, what is I think different than other retreat in three years retreat. And, uh, challenges, yeah, of course, <laughs> you are uh, not allowed to sleep in the bed for three years. You just sit in a small box, sit day and night. So it was a little challenging at the beginning. First two, three weeks, it's a bit challenging not used to it, so you, you fall, you, you sleep like this and then uh, when you wake up, you think you sleep for a few hours, but actually only 15 minutes. <laughs> so you do do like that many times, first few, few nights, then slowly you get used to it. So there was, there was uh, physical challenges and then mentally, yeah, definitely. It's not easy to accomplish and uh, meet the you know the result. Uh, uh, what what you aim or what you wish, <laughs> not that easy. So there's uh, always there these challenges. Other than that, uh, yeah, those are the challenges. And overall, three years retreat is very good, you know, very positive, very experiential, and you learn so many things, especially as I said, many sacred teaching that you get chance to practice and receive. Uh, uh, two two thirty, we I wake up. Every every morning, 2:30 a.m. we wake up, and 10:30, uh, 11 we we go to sleep again in that same bed, <laughs> but we pretend like we're sleeping. So only a few hours for three years we sleep. That is also quite challenging. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? In three years, you want to know? <laughs> yeah, then no contact with the outside world. No contact. How about your teachers who are being in the guidance? Oh, very good. During the three years, there's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, 
keep changing the practice first four month one practice then some practice a little shorter maybe one month another practice then maybe five month another practice six month another practice so keep changing so every practice a new practice start then our retreat master will come and teaching what practice that we are going to do we are going to start so he will be there always whenever we have any questions we can also ask ask them i have my one personal problem i had an appendix <laughs> inside the uh, three year retreat so luckily uh, uh, with the painkiller and uh, some some you know just usual medicine helps help that and uh, don't have to exit the <laughs> the three years retreat because once you exist you can exit you can't go in so that appendix last that pain lasts for one month yeah took took one month <laughs> but finally it, it went went off so very fortunate <laughs> so I, i'm still having little pain i didn't operate but it's okay it's not that big problem During the three years, um, you have no contact with outsiders. Uh, do you have any experience that the uh, Maitreya or Dewa come in contact with you? Protect you means? Visit you. Visit you. Oh. Uh, uh, I think you meant any spiritual experience, right? <laughs> Three years ago. Okay. No, we were introduced this met me, what do you call Maitreya? Maitreya. Oh, Maitreya and Deva, they are all within us. We were introduced Maitreya, Deva, they are all within us. So I am not expecting anything from outside. <laughs> Thank you very much for the license is approved. Um it's almost 9:30 so I would like to invite the teacher to lead us in the dedication of merit. Okay. Son nam de tom je se ba tom ne ne ba nam tom je Sebe tole do do re so jambal pa che kara chamba kundo sambo te a te je te da kunji je so da lo je wa de da tam je ra do cha ju sam jo rem bo ma je pa nam je ju je ba nyam ba me ba kong ne o na Okay, thank you. Good night. <laughs> okay. I also like to thank BGF and uh, Dr. Victor also, and uh, all of you. I know BGF a long, long time. You know, many, many years. They are very. close connection so yeah we have been we have been supporting us many times and uh, recently also with the uh, our recent project uh, i'm trying to build a retreat center in my own monastery so the project 60 70% is finished so it's, it's finishing soon so uh, And on that also, BGF and BGF has been uh, supported. So thank you so much for all of you who are involved, directly or indirectly, <laughs> you know, in this organization. So I will always keep in uh, my prayers to all of you and your family, 
and our minds will always pray for all of you. Okay. Thank you.